Welcome back, everybody. So, I wanted to uh, just share something with you real quick here. It's a camp building technique and a tip for you guys out there in the real world. So, obviously, merging things. This isn't a, a new fantastic thing that I thought of or anything like that by any means. But when I was trying to learn the technique, um, some of the videos that I watched didn't explain quite exactly what the process was. And what I'm going to tell you is that this is, the game is cross-platform, meaning that people are playing on Xbox, people are playing on PC, people are playing on PlayStation. The technique may be different depending on what platform that you're actually using. And that's where I was having problems. So, I will let you know that this works on PC. I don't know about it, any of the other ones. Um, one of the tutorials I was watching to try and learn this, it was based on PlayStation. And it didn't work. I couldn't get it to work to save my life, and it was really aggravating me, and... Um, yeah, so hopefully I can save you guys a little bit of frustration. So let's check it out. What you're going to need is some sort of power source. We need a pressure plate. And you're going to need a mannequin. So let me show you how to set this up real quick. Let's attach our wire. And this is very important. You have to have power to this thing. Now, if you look at the lights, you can see it has the red light on. Allegedly, that's supposed to be green all the time, according to the PlayStation thing. But that's neither here nor there. We're on PC. We need to make that light green. And if you notice, it only turns green when you're stepping on it problem is is that if you take something set it on there it doesn't trigger it uh, that was not explained to me in the videos that I was watching and I couldn't get this <laughs> this glitch to work so hopefully this is going to save you guys a little bit of frustration but if you take a mannequin and you just want to put it right on the edge of it so the foot's kind of clipping into it. See, when we set it, it thinks that there's a human standing on that. That light has to be green for this to work. But I just put the mannequin's foot just so it clips into the switch, just slightly. Because um, we want that mannequin out of the way while we're doing our little little fun projects. Okay. So. This is a real common one, but you can take a desk or a bench, whatever you want, set it down on your switch, grab what you want to sink down into the item, okay, and well, it ain't perfectly lined up by any means, but it's close enough for this demonstration. Now what you want to do once your item is set up on top of what you want to sink it down into, you want to focus just on that bottom object. That's the only thing that you want highlighted. And we're going to pick it up and then just set it down. And we're going to keep picking it up and setting it down and you can see that upper object is sinking down into the desk. And this is for demonstration purposes. I don't have it lined up absolutely perfect. Um, but you can sink it down to where it looks just like it's sitting there all by itself. Pretty simple. And then once you put a chair in here, you really don't notice that shelf underneath but if you center it up nice it just looks like it's part of the desk like it was supposed to be there as a shelf so that is 
one neat little thing that you can do. And this is real common. People do this a lot with the, uh, the terminals and desks. Uh, one of them that I haven't seen before is this one. Same concept, though. I took a, uh, a violin chair. Let me get out of that. And then I just sunk it into this little lounge. And you can see right here where the chair is. But if you back this into a corner, and I didn't merge this perfectly, um, you can... If you finagle it, and sometimes it'll take you a few tries to get it lined up perfectly when you sink it down. But you can actually make that violin sit in the corner there, and you don't see the rest of the chair, except for back here. And if you just shove it off in the corner of the room, or you have something else that you can hide that, it's not a big deal. And it's a unique look for your camp. Pretty neat. Um, here is another one real quick. So obviously we can lay down in beds. What I did find is kind of neat. At least I thought it was kind of neat. These little benches work great for this. If you set it on the edge of the bed, and it might take you a few tries to line it up and get it right. But you can sink it down in here. And depending on the bench that you use, you can actually sink some of them just below the surface of the mattress. And they will still work. Okay. So we're going to stop right here. Set our bed down. And now, we walk up to the bed, we can actually sit down on it. Uh, let's see, let me go into photo mode. So yeah, we can actually sit down on the bed, and someone can lay in the bed at the same time. So that's a neat little trick. Or if you take two sleeping bags you can actually sink those down into the mattress side by side and two people can lay in that bed side by side kind of a little little nifty thing um so yeah that's that but the main thing was i wanted to explain how this works now sometimes for whatever reason um Let's say that we have something up here. For whatever reason, sometimes as you're sinking an item, let's just sink. Ah. No, it didn't. I'm not on the switch properly. I can't see where the switch is. Sometimes what happens, though, is as you're doing this, it doesn't want to um, continue sinking the object in. So I want you to remember, remember I said that this has to be lit up green. For whatever reason, sometimes middle of doing a whole bunch of merges or whatever that green light shuts off it turns red no clue why um, at that point I've had to disconnect the wire and then reconnect it and then my power it basically resets the switch and I could set my mannequin back on it and then it turns green again I've also had times where neither light was lit up even though my wire was attached and same thing disconnect the wire reattach it and it resets your switch so that is not the end of the world to deal with and you can come up with some pretty neat merges you know gives you some unique camp items and 
basically it's your own creativity that uh, that limits this so I wanted to talk about utilizing um, some of the double wall things and broken walls so let's go ahead and break this wall unless you have somebody PvP your camp for you you can't really destroy your own stuff so a, a good way to do it is a flamethrower you can set it up in your camp and then burn your own stuff what's kind of neat though and I used this in a recent camp build is that if you burn the wall you don't have to repair it you can just leave it like that so if you're doing a rustic build or something that looks like it's a decrepit building, this is kind of a neat option because um, some of the walls, and you'll, you'll have to play around and destroy some of them. Let's see, what was a really another neat one? Was it this one? I think it was. Some of them look kind of neat when they're destroyed. Um... Let's go ahead and trigger this. Yeah. See, this one, it still leaves the remnants of the door frame. Kind of looks neat when it's destroyed. So that's, that's an option. I mean, you can leave these walls... Uh, just like they would be a normal wall inside of a building that's just kind of rotten or burnt out, you know, make it make it have that rustic feel. Now, if you don't know what double walls are, there's a technique that you can use to place two walls right up against each other. And I used the red barn doors. These work really well together. I'll show you. Um, there we go. So let's say we set that wall down. Get it out of the way. All right, so this one's lined up. Now, you face the walls at each other. And then from here, what we want to do is go in and replace that wall so let's just turn this one solid and you can see from the other side through that door opening it's solid red now and then we'll replace this one let's say with um, just this solid wall and this gives it a unique look so this could be on the outside of your building or on the inside of a room if that's what you want but it looks like there's kind of old paint and stuff uh, bleeding through that wood because the gaps in the wood gives it a really unique look one of them that i really liked that i had uh, been playing around with show you let's replace this wall and we want to go up to this I, I believe this was the haunted house set, but don't quote me. I don't want to. Uh, I ain't trying to lie to y'all. That looks pretty neat just by itself, but let's uh, off real quick. Where is the regular scrappy wood walls with the shutters? Um, that's what we want to change this guy to. Okay. So what we've done is we've changed it to the shutters. What it looks like on this side, you can see you got the haunted wall siding kind of floating through. And you've got the window on this side, though. Go ahead and open the shutters. It gives it a very, very ran down look. Looks pretty neat. 
So you just have to play around with the different wall sets and everything because there's all kinds of different options that you could do. Um, let's swap this one out real quick to give you another look. Options. Ah. It's another neat set. If we change it out for this window set, you can see how the leaves and the vines that were all kind of decaying and stuck to the other window set, they're actually showing through this one. Uh, another cool thing that I found, especially with the shutters, let's go ahead and we'll close the shutters. And then we're going to change this wall. So let's go ahead and replace this wall and we can use the corrugated steel. So from this side, we have that rustic look with the wood, but you can see some of that corrugated blue metal showing through. Now if we come to this side, let's open the shutters, check that out. I thought that, that was a pretty cool look. It looks like you just patched up your windows with some corrugated steel. Very neat. Uh, and then when you have something rustic looking like this, and then intermingle all these burned out wall sections and things like that, you can make a really uh, just ran down camp. I like a lot of the assets and stuff that Bethesda has given us to play with, but what I don't like is how new some of them, some of them just, they don't look realistic for, I guess, the game. It doesn't look like it would be something that you're just walking through West Virginia, you know, in the apocalypse, it doesn't look like the buildings that they've already created and placed into the game. And that kind of bothers me sometimes. Sometimes I like to have a rustic camp. Uh, I want one that's all ran down and beat up. Um, and some of the assets that they give you like this, <laughs> here's a log cabin. It's pristine. It's like brand new, you know, it's like a contractor just came out there and then built a, a brand new log cabin. Um, that's not always what you want. Same thing with this contemporary house. Um, but yeah, it looks good, but it looks like a brand new house. Uh, not exactly very fallouty. It's not very lore friendly, so. Uh, that's just some ideas, you know, my two cents. Hopefully it gives you guys some ideas because there's some really cool combos that you can do with the uh, double walls and things like that. And I really, I, I like the, the burned out wall thing. It just, it looks like it fits in. So, yeah, that's my two cents for what it's worth. But the, uh, the main reason that I wanted to do this quick little video was show people that this is how it works on PC. I, I can assure you that this is the process. It does work. But I guess on other platforms, they don't even have to supply power to this switch, um, which that's odd. But hey, whatever. Yeah, they just drop the switch down and it automatically lights up green. And clearly that's not how it works on PC. But with a little bit of finagling, it's not a big deal. It's vice versa with the flamethrower. Uh, all the videos that I've seen, they had to supply power to the flamethrower to get it to work. And clearly, it's not like that on PC. Because honestly, if you're using cross platforms and stuff like that, why would you want consistency on a video game? You don't want that. Instead, 
will just mix it up and make all the rules different for all the different platforms. That way everybody can wake up in the morning, turn on their game, and then just enjoy the existential dread of trying to figure it out for themselves. Okay. Well, anyway, you guys have a great day. And, uh, yeah, pretty neat. But it's it's more or less your imagination is the limit. Get out there, burn some stuff up, try it, try different walls. Because the walls, they look different depending on what set that it is and things like that. You've got a few different flavors of that burned out wall look. Oh, go out there and burn some crap up. See if you can build a camp. And imminent shutdown. Well, it was perfect timing because we're ending anyway. Well, you guys, until next time, have a great night or day or whatever time it is with you. And stay safe out there. And don't forget to share this with your friends. Have a great day.